What's going on there guys? Earthmaster here jumping in on this Wednesday evening, December 9th, 2020. It's at 8, 6.50 p.m. is West Coast time here in California. Latest quake on the globe, a 4.9. We're jumping into the latest solar weather information here. The CME, CME that we were expecting hit us a short time ago. It is not uh, any showing any type of major significance at the moment, but it is here. And how do we know that? Well, there's a couple of different options that we're looking at as far as like the solar wind speed goes. You can see that spike of activity there. Oh, um, I'm wanting to say about an hour ago, about an, over a little over a little bit over an hour ago, I would say. This is UT time, so we're looking at. Uh, uh, let's see what do we got there. Zero two three thirty five. Yeah, about an hour and maybe an hour and 20 minutes ago when that CME was picked up there. But we're still waiting, uh, still waiting on some uh, some uptick in the BZ department. You can see right now it's kind of uh, kind of choppy right there. The space weather site here or the solarham.net website also picked that up on their data systems here. You can see the... Uh, all the different measurements and whatnot uh, in the CME that was shown up on the on the graphs here. Uh, a couple of them shown up. There's the wind speed once again there. You can see the rise in the charts there indicating that CME impact. Um, temperature, right? A little bit of uh, charged particles there uh, hitting the Earth's atmosphere. And uh, no doubt, uh, I think this thing's going to kick up a little bit. There was a potential for uh, some northern and mid mid latitude states that would include uh potentially parts of oregon down into parts of kansas uh, that could see this but the uh i'm looking at some data and they're stating that it could arrive a little bit later uh than expected we'll talk about that here in just a second uh Here's a little bit of information. The uh, coronal mass ejection observed on December 7th passed, uh, looks like what, the Discover spacecraft uh, and impact on Earth is expected within the hour. Uh, geomagnetic storm warning will be in effect for the next 48 hours. The strength of the potential storm will all depend on certain characteristics of the solar wind, including the BZ component of the interplanetary magnetic field. Should it point south for a longer duration, this could help to intensify geomagnetic activity and auroras. Middle to high latitude sky watchers should be alert once it is dark outside. Um, so yeah, we're still watching it. We're kind of just like right in the middle of it. There is a forecast, not in the middle yet. Uh, we're waiting for the beginning. I mean, we're kind of at the beginning, but we're waiting for the main show, right? Uh, three day uh, geomagnetic forecast right here. Still looking at a uh, G3 potential storm. 30% uh, uh, visible there in the um, high, high latitude 65, <laughs> middle lat latitude 30% here. I'm going to spit it out. I'm going to spit my tongue out here in a second. Um, there's the uh, Aurora forecast thing here. I was, see here's the, uh, here's a little chart. The only way I think the only way a lot of these states here in Oregon are going to be able to see it or somewhere down around Kansas is if they have a very clear view of the northern sky. And I'm not talking about, I'm, I'm talking about mountain ranges out of the way, uh, no trees, you know, tall trees on the horizon, basically flat land with a clear view of low on the horizon towards the north. So we're kind of watching it. Um, I'm sure this thing may kick up a little bit more here as far as their forecasting thing goes here uh, as the data comes in. But uh, for right now, it is here. Uh, including the space weather site here mentions about it. The CME has arrived, but no storm yet. The CME has just hit Earth's magnetic field, suddenly raising the solar wind velocity around our planet to nearly 600 km's. First contact with the CME might not trigger a geomagnetic storm. In fact, the best storms often develop hours later when the Earth is passing through a CME's turbulent wake. 
So, uh, yeah, we'll keep an eye on it. I'm trying to think where I had seen the predicted later arrival time here. Right now, right now, I'm still thinking somewhere around 2, 3 in the morning, maybe, at best shot, to be able to see that. In the uh, See, right now, everything is quiet. Everything is quiet, and there's no storm at the moment. But uh, no doubt that should change. Now, the time frame is kind of what we're a little bit concerned about because if we... Uh, this thing kind of showing up late and, and the effects whatnot uh, show up a little bit later, say sometime early morning in the afternoon hours, we're obviously not going to see that major effect, the full potential in the afternoon sunlight, right? There's no way. We're, we'll never see it. So that would be kind of kind of disappointing for a lot of a lot of viewers out there that do want to see it. Um, but I think potentially if we don't see it tonight, then tomorrow night would be the best shot. But I, I I'm thinking that uh, this will probably be at its maximum potential sometime tomorrow late morning, early afternoon. Unfortunately. 30 minute roar forecast. We'll keep an eye on this. If this thing spikes up, we will uh, uh, potentially do an update video. And uh, hopefully that does. Just kind of watching everything at the moment, folks. Seeing, uh, seeing how it goes. Did we read this yet? Uh, let's see here. Solar wind. Yeah, I think we did. Okay. Anyway, um, yeah, let's jump back over to the uh, earthquake department here real quick. I think we checked out the wind speed, right? That's 574 at the moment. Updates every 10 minutes or so, it looks like. So... It's somewhat here, but that's expected to rise a little bit more than the uh, current wind speed and the BZ and uh, whatnot. So, all right, let's get into the earthquake department here real quick. Some odd earthquakes taking place out there. Once again, east of the Rockies here out in South Dakota. This struck out there last night, I believe. Um, so this will probably drop off the map here, you know, pretty soon, but it's a notable earthquake, a 3.2 out there in South Dakota. We just don't see those too often out there. Take a look at the data. Of course, population density out there is pretty sparse. Uh, excellent place for me to relocate, I'm, sh I'm sure. Less people, the better. <laughs> of course, the cold, the extreme cold up there. But that's cool. I can, I can survive in the extreme cold. A couple people, looks like, reported filling it. As far as locations go, it looks like, uh, what is that, Bodle? I wonder if that's how you pronounce that name. Looks like it anyway. Bodle. Uh, man, they got some odd names there. Hosmer. Hosmer. Ro what in the world? Roscoe. Hoven. Okay, these are some strange names up there. But don't don't shoot the messenger. Just correct the messenger if I'm wrong. I do know Grand Forks, North Dakota. A couple people reported filling up there, folks. So that's... Uh, like I said, pretty interesting area to see some earthquake activity. Kansas and Oklahoma, no stranger to earthquakes. I did have a little small one way up here, right around the main area, 3.0. I'm sure folks reported feeling that as well. 3.0 is going to feel uh, much more stronger in this type of ground sediment and uh, this, this type of uh, land over here. Uh, let's see here. Yeah, I see quite a few folks reported filling it in some of these areas here uh, around the main region, and including New Brunswick area in Canada. Pretty crazy. Yeah, 3.0. I mean, really. But then again, like I said, this type of uh, type of uh, rock structure, I guess, is the word I'm looking for. Maybe not. Like, there's another word, but I can't. I just can't think about it right now. Uh, let's see what else. Far as any a major earthquake activity goes up here, a little bit of uptick around the Aleutian Islands. In fact, there was a 5.3 that struck there. That was just up to, just after the update video last night, I believe. Since then, uh, a few small quakes and a little bit moderate-sized quake over here near Ban uh, Kabansk. 
looks like Kabansk, Russia. Again, pronunciation wrong. You will correct me, no doubt. I'm anticipating it. <laughs> South America seen some small, moderate-sized earthquakes down there as well, but overall, no major, large movement to report out there. Uh, just we haven't really seen the uh, release, I guess, over here along the western part of the Pacific Ring of Fire that we were kind of watching. Just hasn't happened. Uh, let's zoom in to the micro scale department here on the all magnitudes from the USGS. No major swarms to report in Southern Cal. No major earthquake uptick in activity at Ridgecrest uh, Mammoth Lakes or Nevada. Uh, some small microquakes up here around Mount Lassen. Of course, Mount Lassen Peak sits right around here. Small little microquake just outside of the. Uh, the main summit region there, the 0.5 and also 2.0 over here. Kind of a deeper earthquake out there east of Red Bluff. Uh, as far as volcanic activity goes in the Pacific Northwest, once again, a relatively quiet. Not a whole lot to report out there at all. Tremor Department. Pretty, uh, pretty spectacular, eh? No. Pretty pretty low, eight epicenters to be exact there on the uh, Cascadia subduction zone. Things calming down right there, but then again, that may not be a good sign. Uh, Lake Yellowstone, seeing a little bit of earthquake activity out there. Um, over the last 24 hours or so, this is good. Not good for a super volcano, but it's good that the maps are working. And by the maps, I mean the Yellowstone overview is working. I tried that earlier this morning, and voila, it popped right up. And the earthquake activity that we are seeing on the USGS, USGS map is this activity right here, right over the lake. Uh, you got Lake Butte, the promontory, uh, specifically there at Lake um, Seismograph Station there. I'm not for sure what happened. This kind of almost looks like a geyser or something when, that, when it goes off. And then data just ends. Uh, so not for sure what's happening there, but you can see the continued aftershock and earthquake activity on other stations within the vicinity. You can see all these little spikes of an earthquakes. Uh, those are the ones that all showed up here uh, in the USGS map here. Nothing big, folks. Most of those under 2.0. Uh, looks like uh, the strongest ones being, uh, well, wow, what about 1.2 or so? Like I say, these little swarms, um, and I don't know, I think there's a little bit stronger ones than the 1.2 on those. I mean, potentially that one. But uh, there's definitely a good handful there. Over the past couple hours, things calming down. You can see over the last uh, three or four hours, relatively quiet activity. Potentially wind coming in, it looks like, uh, or some type of weather interference there on that station. And um, let's see here. A little bit of separate swarming. You can see the separate swarming here. Separated, or at least separate is the word. Separate from this activity going on up here around Maple Creek. Some small microquakes there popping off. This has not been showing up on the USGS map here. Um, so they eventually get around to it, no doubt. They will. But nonetheless, some... Uh, Standalone swarming going on here in a different area of Yellowstone National Park, separate from uh, this activity here. So, uh, let's see what else we got to cover here, folks. Uh, it's going to be a fun long night. Uh, hmm, I know there was something else. I just can't think here. Uh, do, 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 do. All right, well, I will continue to keep an eye on this uh, activity, folks. I mean, if I could say there's no storm at the moment, CME has arrived, but you know, there's no storming uh, going on. So pointless to go outside right now. Of course, there's some people I've seen all over Facebook there that are getting ready for this thing, setting up, hoping to get some cool pictures and whatnot. But uh, you know, it may be late, 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 late. 
You know, everything's still looking very, very mellow as far as the KP index goes. And uh, the rest of the charts are pretty quiet. I'm sure that's going to ramp up, folks. I don't know exactly when, though. Uh, we will just have to keep keep an eye on it. Of course, this will go yellow, red. We're expecting, uh, what is it, KP7, I believe. Should shoot up to right around 7 is where they're expecting it. And once again, uh, portions into... Uh, like barely, I'm talking like barely parts of northern Oregon, northeastern Oregon, in the parts of Montana, Wyoming, South Dakota, maybe parts of Kansas up here, uh, right along that area, uh, being able to see it. If things work out to where, uh, to where, to where we'll see it, right? The Earth has a magnetic field and it's there for a purpose, uh, but when uh, solar wind does make it through it does provide an awesome view of uh you know the northern lights man i that's something i want to see before i die i took a trip up to alaska a couple years ago in the winter time hoping to see it but it was cloudy and foggy and ice crystals and unfortunately i didn't see any so i do got to get back up there hopefully soon and uh see these northern lights i think that would be an awesome thing to see uh, in fact, it'd be really cool if I could live stream it when I'm up there. So I would have to plan it. Um, I would definitely have to plan it when we're expecting a major, uh, a major event. So, either way, uh, it's right now. It's just a thought, but thoughts become actions, right? And actions become fun. All right, we're out of here, folks. Um, man, I feel like I'm forgetting something. I really do. Ah, oh, trimmer map. All right. Have a good night, go guys. <laughs> I will chat to you guys a little bit later. Please stay safe. If you do happen to see the aurora where you're at, you know, see if you can take some pictures. The best way to do it is to use... Um, a lot of the iPhones have that long duration, long exposure. Not super long, but it's pretty good for a for a cell phone uh, to where you can keep it on for three or four seconds, right? You have to keep your phone pretty still. Uh, and of course that adds more light into the, uh, the sensor to pick up the, uh, of course that and along with the ISO that they raise allows for a, a little bit more brighter pic picture than you would see on a, uh, on a phone that doesn't have that long, long exposure. But uh, if you got a, a pretty good camera, a uh, long exposure at probably about the, 20 to 30 second range would be really good for picking that up pending things are you know like i said as as they're supposed to go earthquakes you know sometimes earthquakes do happen when we get this solar weather event you got a picture of the earth as a whole uh surrounded by the map of course we can't see it right but it is protected and uh when solar wind hits it well it does things it it there's pressure, you know, being applied at the, uh, not only above the earth, but I believe also, um, down below and inside the earth. We'll have to discuss that in a, a totally different, uh, video one of these days. It's a pretty lengthy conversation, so we're, uh, we'll do that another time. But keep an eye out for earthquakes, you know, whenever we have solar events like this, things do happen. We, we start to see earthquake uptick. Not all the time, but, uh, you know, surprising enough, it does happen. And large ones, large earthquakes happen, too, at, uh, at solar weather uh, upticks. So. All right, guys, have a good night. We'll chat to you guys a little bit later. Please stay safe.